right? It was a messaging service. Now it's an everything app and has everything you ever need in it, right? And people who live in China when they go abroad get really like frustrated. You can't do everything on your, on your phone. You can't pay for a taxi, send somebody some money. You know, you can't book your ticket, book your, book your flight, right? I need to hold it up, do I? All right. Sorry, this is kind of, all right. Nice slide, right? I don't know, can you get a like clicker maybe? Is it not? So how on earth did this happen? How did we get to China becoming innovator? Because you think about it, China only opened up in the late 1970s, right? And really there, was, there were no shopping malls, no retail of any structure until the 1990s, right? But then they really adopted social media very quickly. So you had leapfrog, right? Uh, as in many places around the world, TV media is dying, traditional TV media is dying, print journalism is dying in China, it's all going online. I think India is super unique in that all forms of media are still growing. You see print media growing at single digits, you see TV growing at double digits, it's still a quite exciting market for that, but China's gone really digital. Um, and there are kind of four areas, sort of like the factors, like why has China risen to this innovation leader? What has really happened? And there's four kind of areas. China, I would say, has made like a re-entry to the global market. And I'll explain what I mean by that later. China, since 2008, they hosted the Olympics, has been much more confident on the world stage. And you see leaders like Xi Jinping, these people being quite confident at Davos and these global events, right? So China now has a lot of confidence because they've been shown that their economy is stronger than the US. So in 2008, global financial crisis, China was standing tall still, right? So they felt they have a renewed confidence. And I think this, I feel this confidence in India at the moment. I really feel it when I talk to my colleagues, I move around, there's a buzz, right, around it. That's really good. I think that, that gives way to innovation and creativity. There's a rising middle class, or the millennials, as people call them, but in China we call them the post-90s, right? Born in the 1990s, right? Those guys have so much spending power and so much share of voice. Um, social commerce, as I mentioned, has become a huge deal in China in the last two or three years. So e-commerce, as we all know, is the biggest, China is the biggest e-commerce player, and social commerce now is going to the next level. We believe that in the future, all commerce will be social in nature. Think about that. I'll, talk, I'll come back to it later. Influence and marketing in China is massive. They yield so much power, and we, we co-create with them for brands and drive commercial results for our clients. So influencers are bigger than media in many ways, because people trust influencers more. They seem like real people, seem like, right? And, and they can relate to them, right? I said seem like, right? You heard that, okay? All right. So back to my nice little photo from my old balcony at my house. So China has really had a re-entry into the global economy. What do I mean by that? We have these gentlemen on stage, all men unfortunately, but we have a core leader who's really taken the reins. So he's taken absolute power. And he's a, he's a strong man, right? And he has a master plan. The previous presidents in China were focused very much domestically, right? He, he ha they have an external policy, right? And you've probably seen some of these things they talk about. So I think also given what's happening with the US president, and the sort of America first approach. We've seen Xi Jinping step onto the international stage and be seen as the globalization driver. Who would have thought it, right? China is the globalization driver. Oh, this is annoying. Okay, and, and you have this, right? He goes to Davos and he becomes the speaker of the, of the, of the globalization world. It, it's unusual, right? Normally that, that's Obama, right? Or the US president, right? So China is stepping a little bit into this void right now on the, on the global stage and being seen as a driver of global commerce. Very interesting. And you've probably seen this before, the Belt and Road. I've seen a lot of negative commentary here in the media about this, but China has a grand vision to do what the US did before, export capacity around the world, right? Steel making, cars, computers, phones. I, I noticed mobile phone guys everywhere here. Vivo, right? The Chinese brand sponsoring the IPL, I see that, right? Really, really trying to become a much broader player. Whoa, and it's crashed. All right, okay, I don't need slides anyway. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So it's a beautiful map. You'll hear more about this in the future, right? So it's the grand vision they have, which Xi Jinping has. And we have a rising middle class like we do in India, right? In, by 2020, the middle class in India and China will be way, way bigger than Europe or US. That's gonna fundamentally change how we do marketing and communicate in many, many ways and it's already happening in China. 
those, those kids are a bit young, but they'll be there soon. They're already on their phones, right? You can't stop them off their phones. This is, um, all right. So this is my little table here. So if you look at today, where we are. So by 2020, China's middle class will be 167 million. India, 53. This number is between 16 and 34,000 US dollars. Thank you so much. That's our partner, everybody. Give her a hand. Thank you. <laughs> so if you look at this, right? We have US, Japan, Europe. These are the two drivers of the global economy going forward, the middle class, right? And I think this is going to be very powerful for us in China, but also India to really create models that work for us versus what we do in the US before or Europe, right? There's gonna be a whole new revolution around this. This also doesn't work. Oh, here we go. Um, is it? I'm pointing over here.